when you have people from different backgrounds, they bring different perspectives. I mean, look at the things that we now see on TV, things that we never used to see. And that is because we have different storytellers. Creating real systemic change is a continuous journey that requires us to always keep taking steps forward, no matter how big or how small. This is the work in progress. 2020 was a year that gave a re-energized and much louder voice to the long-standing issues surrounding systemic racism and inequality. For the country and the world at large, it was clear that business as usual was no longer acceptable. In the literal sense, the American workplace is no exception. Many studies have shown that white males make up 66% of America's C-suite, and there are only four black CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. And while I dig me some white males, innovation thrives and businesses grow exponentially when there is much more representation from black and brown voices, persons with disabilities, different gender identities, and global cultural backgrounds. And arguably, no industry has as big an opportunity to change this landscape as the media industry. The pandemic has us viewing more content than ever in the middle of one of the biggest global focuses on diversity in recent history. And one of the biggest content providers is Netflix, a global epicenter of culture. What Facebook or Twitter is for social media, Netflix is for entertainment. Both a technology and an entertainment brand, Netflix is a media giant within a fragmented industry with a vast library of stories to tell. And like a lot of companies, it's not without its very sometimes public missteps. The brand needs its internal culture to be inclusive in order for its content to be diverse, which is key to their global business model. And although the company has made some great strides in representation on screen, there was still a lot of work to be done internally, as Verne Myers, VP of Inclusion Strategy, found out when she joined the company in 2018. This is public information, but when I look at Netflix and their history, I mean, there was an inflection point around the time that you came in. There was some damaging reports around, like, somebody used the wrong language. You know, I'm curious, is like, were they doing the work before that, you know, that critical moment hit? And then yeah. what has been implemented since then? Yeah, so um, I was actually consulting at Netflix um, prior to that time. And the company had also, maybe a year before that, added inclusion to its values. And I think what the company realized is to really achieve this value, they were going to have to invest and that they were gonna to have to bring in professionals. And that while it is true that everybody, and we believe this in the work that we do, everybody's responsible for creating this environment, you still need a professional set of people who can really guide that cultural change process, basically. Um, and so what we have been doing is creating this comprehensive, in-depth um, cultural change process and so a lot of times people will say, well, what have you accomplished? And we got some things that we've accomplished, but I want people to recognize that this is a long-term cultural change process. Companies have not gotten into the situation that they are where there is this dominant group and the other folks who are deeply underrepresented. That didn't happen overnight. So to shift it and to change it is not also not gonna happen overnight because each group may have a specific um, set of barriers or issues around inclusion that they need to pay specific attention to. Tech is different from the studio, which is di different from marketing, which is different from finance <laughs> and legal. So what we have tried to do is to bring a certain kind of expertise that our colleagues can call on and can learn how to own this work for themselves. I often say that it can't be like a bunch of cocktail parties, a bunch of events, you know, I sometimes call it a drive-by diversity. It has to be comprehensive, it has to be thoughtful, and it has to be strategic. And it seems like one of the first things you did was this sort of company-wide survey interview thing. Can you walk us a little bit through that process and, and what, you, what you learned? I will be in front of the executives and I'll be like, everybody, we're gonna do a conversation on privilege. Right. And as you might know, some people are like, oh, privilege. A lot of folks a bit worry about it being so. a, <laughs> you know, right, being a bad word, but we really see it as um, a superpower. 
that when you can identify your privileges, that's the thing you can leverage to create more equity and inclusion for others. We talk about allyship being so important because it's a thing that every one of us can do. Like a black person who's straight could be very a very good ally to an LGBT person, right? So you may be experiencing oppression on the black side, but as a straight person, you have privilege. And so how are you going to use it? So all of us, because we have multiple identities in this you know, social hierarchy and are, are treated differently based on it, we can find those places. And for a long time in corporate America, we could not name racism. We could not say anti-Black. We could not say systemic inequality, right? Because everyone felt, um, this can't be true. I'm like, how else are you going to explain the disparities? Like yeah. either, either there's a problem in the system or you saying this whole group of people aren't cap as capable, like yeah. which is its own racism or it's its own bias. Mm -hmm. So we need everyone with a certain kind of understanding and vocabulary and concepts to use those to look at what they're doing every day, who they're hiring, how they're promoting, how they treat people, even in a meeting, some who gets hurt, who doesn't get hurt, you know, how do we listen to different languages and ideas? How do we bring perspectives? All of that is the work of inclusion. And we need everybody looking through that lens at the work they do in order to move us forward. Yeah, innovation in and of itself is like entering the unfamiliar at its best. I think that echoes what you do. And there's this whole like wiggle room of forgiveness or lack thereof. And yes. especially in light of cancel culture, it's like you said one thing, you're gone. <laughs> It's like, but I apologize. And I didn't know, like there, there's so many dynamics of the psychology that goes into it. Like how does Netflix approach that from a storytelling standpoint as well as internally? Our strategic bet as the inclusion team is that we work on the inside first. And as we get better on the inside, it has a positive impact on everything we do outside. Everything from the service and the way our technology looks and serves our customers and customers to be, to what kind of content we have, who's in front of the camera, who's behind the camera. We've done a lot of great work, a lot of good progress, lots more work to do. One of my fears, I guess, is like someone might watch this and go like, yeah, but that's Netflix. They have money, they have resources, they have XYZ. And if I'm mom and pop startup or you know, I'm 60 employees deep in my organization, or maybe I'm a hundred thousand and there's no way I can even, you know, begin to think about how to what like what are some of the first steps to take, you know, large or small? No matter which where you are, you can start, right? And what that starts looks like is really asking the question, where are we missing it? Who's missing? I always say you need two things if you're gonna to try to make difference in inclusion. You need attention and you need intention. It's never gonna change if you're not paying attention and if you don't have an intentional commit, long-term commitment to see change. So my belief is that no matter what size you are, too small, too large, maybe COVID has decimated um, your staff, in some ways, there is a there is some silver lining. Sometimes as we've slowed down, so now we have conversations um, that we didn't have before. Sometimes uh, we had a dominant group, but now because we had to let people go, when we start hiring again, we got to keep our eye on the ball and make sure that the hiring pool is diverse. Sometimes it's we're going to work in this particular department first see what kind of changes we can make. And like, maybe it's the, you know, the sexy part of the company, or it's the part where uh, there's influence. You just have to be strategic and, yeah. and find like an entry point and then commit to pushing that through. In January, 2021, Netflix released its first ever company-wide inclusion report with an accompanying short film to offer a snapshot of where the company currently is in terms of diversity and its plans for the future. Just under half of all employees are female, and over 46% of Netflix's U.S. workforce is made up of people from one or more underrepresented groups. But both Black and Latinx employees only make up about 8% of that total each, far less than the nation's population average.
I feel like a lot of organizations do things behind closed doors. And, but you being here today, for instance, is like, look, let's talk about it. Let's, you know, let's put it out there. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the work in progress. I was a consultant. And so I used to watch companies put out stuff and I would just be like, but I'm inside and I know what's going on. <laughs> like, it's a lot of window dressing. It's a lot of um, pretense and so forth. And so initially when I came in, I was like, everybody, let's just work, right? But year two, this is the end of year two. And I feel like we have things that we can say that have worked and that we love and that we're excited about. And maybe that excitement will excite, excite others and other companies. And because we're part of this whole ecosystem, right? We, mm -hmm. We're part of like, um, it, we can't just exist by ourselves. We've got to influence the industries that we're in. I mean, that's where the exclusion still exists, right? So ultimately we've got to say, hey, this is what we're trying. Here's where we are trying to go. There are other organizations and individuals outside those walls that are doing the good work as well. How yes. do you go about identifying, vetting, and then even activating you know, potential collaborators and maybe an example or two. Well, which is really awesome is, um, you know, we've got all this content and we are trying to go places where people have not gone. We're trying to tell the most authentic stories. We have this incredible boot camp that we're doing now and we're working with Norfolk University, which is a historically black college. And, you know, you see a lot of companies starting to say, okay, where are we looking for talent and where have we missed talent? Mm -hmm. But not only that, how do we grow talent? So we have a number of programs to one, identify folks we've missed and two, um, help to strengthen what they're capable of doing so that they have opportunities. We're changing access to the extent that we can because you know bias is the thing that prevents people to have access, which allows people to rationalize the exclusion. Right? right. So we're trying to take away that. And then the other thing we're doing is we are trying to create the pool because quite frankly, with all the ways that bias has operated and the systemic ways that inequality has gone forward, we there are people who are brilliant who can't even see themselves as yeah. being someone who's in tech or someone who's on that screen or someone who's even behind that camera. We've got to change those narratives and yeah. we've got to give people the tools they need in order to come. And really it's all about future proofing our company. Right. I mean, some of it is about fairness and equality, but a lot of it for any business is about how are you future proofing yourself? Like, are you going to be relevant and competent? Yeah. And are you going to have the best people as you move into the future? Part of the Netflix approach as a media company certainly seems to be that if they work on fixing issues internally, then that will reflect externally in its content. And in order for authentic representation on screen, they need to work with both execs off screen and to create new opportunities for underrepresented groups. Darnell Moore, author and the director of the inclusion strategy at Netflix, was brought on by Vernay to do just that. I am part of an ACE team supporting our content org, um, physical production, marketing, comms, publicity and awards, also including animation, um, really supporting all of our colleagues, ensuring that they have all of the tools that they need to effectively do their jobs. And to effectively do a job is to lead, to, to do a job with inclusion in mind. It's not inclusion cosmetics. It's not about us being able to point and give you just numbers, but it's, it's like inclusion beyond the surface. Um, it's really allowing our the folk who are making decisions around green lighting, um, folk who are, are are making decisions around acquiring um, shows, are who are who are populating productions. It is really about ensuring that they have the bandwidth, the inclusion muscle necessary to make good on our value of inclusion. The word pipeline gets thrown around a lot. Mm. Um, and you guys have really worked on some really amazing work in terms of filling the pipeline. Um, I think one of the things that really caught my eye because it was pre-COVID, there was a post on March 3rd, 2020, and it was you in front of a crowd of uh, college students. And it was a workshop all about career development. Tell us a little bit about the, you know, your work in the pipelines ecosystem. That was a, 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 a pro program that we partner with, with 50, I believe, 50 college and, um, and others who are not even in college 
folk could come in to learn about the business, get tools that were necessary for them to find their way into the business. We are a, 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 a reputable company that sits right squarely in Hollywood, right? Right off of Sunset Boulevard in a neighborhood where people can walk by our building, right? Have dreams of making their way into Hollywood, but may not know how to get into our building, right? <laughs> and this was like an opportunity for us to open up the floodgates to ensure that we are not just talking the talk of diversity and representation, but opening a door for folk who are traditionally underrepresented in a variety of fields within entertainment um, to be here. So the work that's being done across the company it has everything to do with disrupting whatever those walls were that kept folk who have traditionally been underrepresented out, um, bringing them in. Now, if we think about Netflix and the entire ecosystem of the entertainment world, they have the potential to play a major role in disrupting that industry and moving equality forward. We put out so much content, which means we need so much talent, which means we can begin to populate an industry and even also on the tech side um, that has been like too uh, exclusive. We now need so many people. And with the other streamers, they need so many people that we have the ability to offer opportunity. And that opportunity, we hope, will become more and more diverse. And by doing that, people will see that that difference is the power. It is not the thing to be afraid of. It is the thing that is true about us as human beings and will help us to improve as human beings.